flee as a bird to your mountain, for lo, the wicked bends their bow. They may readily their arrows upon the string, that they may privily shoot at the upright in heart. If the foundation be destroyed, what can the righteous do? And the word of the Lord is already blessed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Let everything that has breath praise, praise the Lord. Lord. Amen. Would you stand to your feet for prayer this morning? We want to go before the Lord as humble as we know how. Amen. Amen. Father God, we thank you for this day, Lord. We thank you for waking us up this morning. We thank you for being good to us all throughout the week and the month and the year, Lord God. We thank you that you didn't have to touch us, but you touched us this morning with your finger of love, God. And we tell you thank you today. Thank you for keeping us from last week to this week, oh God. Thank you for keeping us from hurt, harm, and danger. Thank you, God, that you let us wake up in our right minds today, Lord God. We tell you thank you. Lord, have your way in this service. Yes. Move in this place, Lord God. We love you, and we give you praise, glory, and honor. Yes. Bless all of those who wanted to be here and could not be here. All of those who are sick and burdened down, for God. Be with every member of our church family. Lord God, we just thank you. Be with everyone who stands in the name of God on today, yes. Yes. declaring your word, Lord God. Give us your strength. Bless your people. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.
we talk and how we live, we pray that you are our God, our Father, and we thank you. Hallelujah. Who would like to be Jesus? Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah.
People that can play the guitar. Don't be Harry. You got people that can play. <laughs> and then, Harry's playing a little bit of guitar. Uh, Jaden's starting to carry on playing the guitar too. So I would love to see some guitars up here. My wife always wants to play the bass. Uh, Keita plays the guitar, but well, she's, she's got a guitar. No, I just say but she wanted to play. But so one day she might get bold enough to break out. It's amazing because she doesn't play right handed, but she plays the guitar left handed. Praise the Lord for that. But I just, anybody got anything they want to share? I'm going to bring our reverend before you right now. Thank just thank God for that. Um, I just say, God, when I come to church, I enjoy seeing God's people. You know, I, we're good people. I think we're good people. My, thing, my prayer to God, say, God, you can build on us. I think we get some good people here. People that are dedicated to God. People that love the Lord. People that are faithful to God. You know, you, you know I think running on Saturday nights, trying to praise God on Sunday morning. I think you guys live good lives. I thank God for that. I know my kids live good lives. I have always say I am blessed that my children are saved, my grandchildren are saved, even my in laws are saved. So, so just thank God how God has blessed us. So, so you know, all these good people in our lives, I just thank God for that. So, Reverend, are you ready to come forward? Sure. So, you guys try to get all your notes together? Sure, sure. You got it? Okay. I'll get the thank you. Thank you, sir. Praise the Lord again. Praise the Lord. He's worthy, isn't he? Amen. Can you just put your hands together like he's worthy? Give him a praise today. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. God is so good to us. Praise the Lord. All right. I did ask Sister Tanya if she would prepare a song. I always do. So I'm going to ask her if she will bless the Lord in a song in her own way. She's moving them right out. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Jesus.
chapter 16. I'm going to try to read a little bit. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Evangelist, you have your Bible out here, your pages turned. You have Acts chapter 16. Would you like to help as well? Amen. Sister Ann, are you ready? Is she in the room? Acts chapter 16. Evangelist, when you get it, if you'll come forward. Sister Ann, when you get it, if you'll come forward. Amen. I believe in help in ministry, amen. And you'll see in this message, Paul had a helper in the ministry named Silas, amen. amen. All right, Acts chapter 16, we're going to start with verse. Uh, I'm going to start with verse 16. I'll read to 18, and then I'll let Evangelist take it. And then Sister Ann after her. One day, as we were going down to the place of prayer, 
we met a demon-possessed slave girl. She was a fortune teller who carried a lot of money or earned a lot of money for her masters. She followed along behind us shouting, these men are servants of the Most High God, and they have come to tell you how to be saved. Verse 18 says, this went on day after day until Paul got so exasperated that he turned and spoke to the demon within her and said, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he said, and instantly it left her. Verse 19, evangelist. And when her master saw that the hope of their gain was gone, they caught Paul and Silas and drew them unto the marketplace, unto the ruler. And brought them to the magistrate and saying, These men, being Jews, do exceedingly trouble our city and has teach customs which are not lawful for us to receive, neither to observe being Romans. And the multitude rose up together against them, and the magistrate rented off their clothes and commanded to beat them. And when they had laid many stripes upon them, they cast them into prison, charging the jailer to keep them safely. Who, having received such a charge, thus them into the inner prison and made their feet fastened in the stock? All right. Thank you, ma'am. Mm -hmm. We're in verse 25. Around midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the other prisoners were listening. <clears throat> Suddenly, there was a massive earthquake, and the prison was shaken to its foundations. All the doors immediately flew open, and the chains of every prisoner fell off. The jailer woke up to see the prison doors wide open. He assumed the prisoners had escaped, so he drew his sword to kill himself. But Paul shouted to him, stop, don't kill yourself, we are all here. The jailer called for lights and ran to the dungeon and fell down trembling before Paul and Silas. <clears throat> then he brought them out and asked, sirs, what must I do to be saved? They replied, <clears throat> believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved along with everyone in your household. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Amen. Did you hear the word? Yes. Yes. This scripture talks about a man named Paul. Now, most of us have heard of Paul. He wrote most of the New Testament, right? We know he's a trick, right? He's the kind of guy that you may or may not want to be friends with, right? He's just, he's some kind of character. He's the kind of guy that would persecute Christians. He's the kind of guy that wouldn't like you just because he didn't like you, right? But one day, a man named Jesus, yeah, yeah a man named Jesus changed his name. Not only did he go from Saul to Paul, but he changed his life. Yes. This man who was all on the devil's side became all in on the Lord's side. Right. This is a man now on the Lord's side that will fight tooth and nail to tell you who Jesus is. This man is our example and he tells us over and over and over again that the Lord is with you. So this means that he believes what he's preaching. Yes. In chapter 15, he's hanging out with a guy named Barnabas. In chapter 16, he's hanging out with a guy named Silas. The Lord showed me in this message, first thing first, is that we have to choose our friends carefully. You don't have to hear me, but I'll say it again. We have to choose our friends carefully. Because everybody that walks with you in chapter 15 will not walk with you in chapter 35. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh -huh. I'm, I'm, I'm 44 now, I'm on my way, and everybody who started with me, they're not walking with me today. And it's not because they're not good people, it's because God has people in your life for seasons and reasons and times. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. So at this particular time in Paul's ministry, this is his second missionary journey, he's walking with Silas. Now, I always think about Sister Tanya. Our friends in Columbus, they call us Vip and Bop, whoever that is, because, you know, we're always together. You say one, you say the other, because we're always together. But there comes a time when the Lord might shift that ministry. She might not always be beside me. I pray the Lord that she is. Amen. But God sometimes put people in your life for seasons and reasons and times. Amen. This tells us that friendship is important. 
It's special. I think about Evangelist and Sister Kathy. I think about Sister Faye, kind of road dogs. You know, you kind of always see them together. When you see one, you see the other. And it's beautiful because people don't value friendships anymore. Amen, amen. The Bible says that a friend sticks closer than a brother. Yeah. Now, I know Pastor Mike and his brother, they're cool, they're close. But I believe that friends can be just as close. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I always tell people, especially when I'm dating, I always say, I'm a good friend to have. Because I know what friendship means. If the Lord says, I'm his friend, and he'll never leave me or forsake me, yes. that tells me that a friend is supposed to stay there through thick and thin. Amen. Yes, yes. Amen. And so in this particular chapter, not only is Paul hanging out with Silas, He's his friend in the ministry. I believe they pray together, not just at church. Amen. Amen. Yeah, I believe they get together and they worship the Lord and they spend time together in the word. I believe that they have this connection in the spirit. And so when hard times come in chapter 16, they're not pressed by it. They're not worried by it because they're going to do what they have always done. They're going to praise their way through. Yes. Amen. Now, in this story, it tells us about a demon-possessed girl. She happens to be a little girl. Uh, she's following them. So, you know, you think about somebody's following you. Pastor Vic is a real true man of God. You're not going to really be mad at the compliment, right? But Paul was in tune enough with the Lord to know it's not what she's saying. It's the spirit inside of her. Okay, this is the point number one with our friends. Everybody who's cheerleading for you may not mean you any good. Amen. You have to be careful. And it's not just for young people. I wish somebody would have told me when I was 16, but it's for all of us. Because sometimes, you know, folks will pat you on your back and talk about you before they leave your presence, right? You have to be careful the company that you keep. And so Paul began to cast out the demon, and it said, suddenly, somebody say suddenly. Suddenly. Do you believe that you have power in your mouth? Yes. 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 We have power to speak. He, Jesus has power to speak, so I have power to speak. Yes. Our Father said, let there be light, and there was light. We have power, life and death, in the tongue. Yes. Somebody used to say when we were little, sticks and stones may break our bones, but names and words will never hurt. I'm here to tell you, words hurt. Yes, 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 yeah. Yes, words will hurt. Yes, so you have to watch your mouth. Yes. You have to watch what comes out of your mouth because you can speak life and death. Amen. Praise Amen. the Lord. Amen. After he did what he was supposed to do, you're a man of God. If you see a demon-possessed person, you want to cast out that demon. I remember being in a church service way back in the day, and it was like a revival. We were having church, and the man was preaching. The, the music was fire. It was a good time in the Lord, and somebody began to bark like a dog. My God. You would not believe how these preachers and, and Christians began to gather together in the middle of the church and they began to lay hands yeah. because they had to cast out that devil yeah. in the name of Jesus. It don't matter where you are, you can be in the grocery store yeah. because there is power in the name of Jesus. Yeah. If you know the name of Jesus, yeah. you can call on the name of Jesus, yeah. right? Yeah. We can't be afraid of the devil because we have power. Yeah. Sometimes we forget that we're walking with power. We might sing, we might pray, we might preach, but we forget that he's given us power. Yeah. He hasn't given us the spirit of fear, but of power. Hallelujah. And so he cast the demon out. He did what he was supposed to do. And what happened? Trouble comes. They take him to the magistrate. They take him to jail. Before they arrest these men of God, they beat them. Yeah. So bad that the skin is torn. We know how it is in the Bible. They, they beat yeah. these guys. They are just simply yeah. doing the work of the Lord. They beat them. They arrest them. This is like false imprisonment. I didn't do anything wrong. But the owners of the slave girl didn't like that you drove out that spirit. Now she can't make me no money no more. Uh -huh. They had a problem. Uh -huh. So they arrested these men. But how many know you can't steal my praise? Amen. Yeah, I got a praise on the inside. There's a song we used to sing in church that says, I, I got a praise. I got a praise and I got to get it out. I got a praise. Help me sing it. I, I got a praise. I got a praise and I got to 
get it out. I got to praise. Sometimes in your midnight hour, you have to remember your praise. Amen. You have to remember what God has done for you. Yeah. You have to think about the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done. Yeah. Down through the years, yeah. how he saved you and picked you up and turned you around. If you just put your mind on Jesus, no devil in hell can stop your praise. I don't care if it's a sickness, a diagnosis, or a disease. No devil in hell will stop my praise because he's been too good for me. I began to think about the songs that brought me out. The songs like, can't nobody do me like Jesus because he's my friend. He picked me up and he turned me around. Hallelujah. He placed my feet on a solid ground. Hallelujah. Can't nobody. I'm going to praise my way out. Hallelujah. The Bible tells us that late in the midnight hour, hallelujah, begin to make me think about that Fred Hammond song. God's going to turn it around. Hallelujah. Late in the midnight hour. Hallelujah. The Bible says they begin to pray. Hallelujah. And they begin to sing. Hallelujah. I believe that Silas because his name started with an S, maybe he started the song first. I begin that Paul, I believe that maybe Paul began to pray because his name starts with a P. So they were praying and they were singing and they were worshiping and they were praying and they were singing and they were worshiping and they were praying and they were singing and they were worshiping. Hallelujah. Even though their feet were in stock, hallelujah. You can't stop my praise. Hallelujah. to me. He's so good to me. The Bible tells us that Paul had a vision before he went on this journey and in the dream and the vision there was a man who said come to me. I need your help. So all of this, all of this journey, all of this being arrested and all of this being beat, hallelujah, until they couldn't recognize him. All of this was because he went on a journey to help somebody else. And the Lord told me to tell you today, one, Choose your friends carefully. Two, don't lose your praise. Don't lose your song. And three, don't think about yourself all the time. Sometimes in this thing called life, God sends you on a journey to help somebody else. Hallelujah. The Bible says that you have to leave the 99 and go after that one sometime. Hallelujah. And Paul was on an assignment. It didn't matter that he was beat. It didn't matter that his heart might have broke because he was innocent. It mattered that he was doing the will of God. Yeah. It mattered that that one man needed to know Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. The Bible yeah. says that after the jailer came back and saw that these men were praising and worshiping God, the earth began to shake. Yeah. The earth began to shake. Yeah. And the ground began to move. Yeah. And the chains broke loose. All yeah. the and all the prisoners were yeah. free. And the jailer began to want to kill himself because he knew if, the, if all the prisoners were free that they would kill him. And Paul spoke up and said, hold on. Don't kill yourself. We are all here. Hallelujah. And the jailer said, sir, what must I do to be saved? Who is this Jesus that you serve? Who is the Jesus that broke the chains? Hallelujah. And he was saved. He wasn't just saved, but his household was saved. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody help me with these papers. Hallelujah. God is so good to us. I just want to tell you today, if you live this thing called life, keep Jesus on your mind. Keep Jesus on your mind. Be careful and choose your friends carefully. Don't lose your song even in your midnight hour. Because midnight don't last always. Yeah. Trouble don't last always. Yeah. We know the weeping may endure for a night, but joy is coming in the morning. Midnight don't last always. Midnight is from 12.00 to 12.01, hallelujah. If you look at it, it really don't last that long. It might feel like a long time. But our midnights don't last that long because God is with us. Yes. Yes. Even in the fire.
fiery furnace. Yeah. And even in the lion's den. Yeah. And even in the prison cells. Hallelujah. God is with us. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. There is a meaningful midnight. You may not understand it. But there is a meaningful midnight. It might just mean that you're going through it for somebody else. You might be going through it to share your testimony with somebody else. Yes. I remember, I remember I went through a midnight. I remember, I remember being pregnant. I was young. I wasn't married. I was, I was in sin. I was, I was just in a bad place. I had a midnight. I had a midnight. I had a midnight. I was all alone. I, I remember that I, I hid my pregnancy from my parents because I knew they weren't going for it. My daddy was a preacher, you know, they weren't, they weren't going for it. I hid it as long as I could, and I was sick, you know. I got to be about six months pregnant, and, and finally my water broke, and it was just a, a horrible day. I remember I went to the beauty salon that day, and my water broke, and I was young. I didn't know what it was, and they laughed at me in that beauty salon, and they talked about me, thought I peed on myself, and I didn't know what was going on with my body. It was, yeah. it was a midnight. It was a yeah. midnight for me. And I got home, and I, I went to Grant Hospital, and they said, well, your water broke, but you'll just have a dry birth. You'll be fine. Your baby will be fine. I went home, and, and I started cramping. I, that was contractions. I found out later. I didn't know any better. I told my dad, and he took me to the hospital, and it was right at midnight when he took me to OSU. He took me to a different hospital, and they kept me, and they induced me, and long story short, I did not come home with a baby. Yeah. And after my daddy left yeah. me, I, I stayed in this room. They were afraid to put me in the labor and delivery hallway because all the babies were crying. They were afraid of my mental state, you know. And I remember that next morning, I called my boyfriend to tell him, you know, we lost the baby. And a woman answered his phone, and it wasn't me. And it was a midnight. It was a midnight after three years, you know. I, I never touched the phone. Why is somebody else touching the phone, you know? It was a midnight hour for me. And I'm not telling you this because I'm very private and I really don't tell my business. But sometimes God sends us through things to share our issues with other people. Sometimes our midnights are to help somebody else. And I thank the Lord because even though, even though I went through that, he taught me through all the hurt and the pain yeah. in my life to love even harder. Yeah. 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 You know, some people yeah. can be bitter and resentful. And the Lord taught me through all the hurt, there is love. He is love. Yeah. He is love. Yes, he I is. love you, sis, yeah. and I love you. I would give my kidney for you. I would, I would do anything for you because God is love. Yes, he is. Yes, God he is. is love, and he's put that love deep down on the inside. Yes. Let your midnight minister to you yes. and other people. Yes. Yes. You've got to tell it. Yeah. You've got to go through it with your head held high, yeah. with the praise on your lips, yeah. and you've got to share yes. so that somebody else can come out all right. Amen. Amen. The Lord Amen. is good. Yes. Sister yes. Ann has a piece of paper with some words on it. If Pastor Vic will come up here, I'm going to ask Mr. Sims if he'll come up here. I'm going to ask Miss Erica if she'll come up here. She's still here. I'm going to ask Sister Ann if she'll come. Sister Kathy. These are people that I know that sing. Now, if you sing, Sister Jenny, would you come up here? If you sing, Sister Chris, if you sing, I want you to come up here. Y'all can space out six feet apart. Y'all don't have to breathe on each other. Amen. Amen. If you can sing, I want you to come up here. I want you to come up here. She's going to give you that piece of paper. The Lord gave me this song working on this message. about Sister Pastor Vic telling me you guys can move that out the way. Space out if you will. Just spread out. Make sure that you don't, you're not touching anybody. Spread out a little bit. I always think about Pastor Vic and Sister Ann getting on me about not singing original songs. Amen. And so the Lord gave me this. It's real simple. It's real easy. Y'all space out. Space out. Spread out. Spread out. Spread out. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. It's new to me, too. I don't know what that will either. We come together.
that they can receive healing, deliverance, the power of God, whatever they need from God, God's able to give it. He's a God of grace, able to meet every need. I just thank God for that, uh, that we can pray for one another and lift one another up. Sometimes we get overwhelmed you, by the world and temptations and trials. And that's why we have people around us that's able to pray with thank us. You, to pray us through. God wants to bring breakthrough in our lives. Thank you, I just thank God for that. The thank body needs ministry. Thank you, it's good seeing faces today, Kathy. I know. <laughs> uh, I just thank God for seeing faces today. Todd, when you first used to come here, you had a different look, so I had to keep it. Then I realized who you are. And I just thank God for, you know, like you said, you was here years ago. Cynthia, we've been missing you. Um, I know you go back and forth to Indiana and stuff, so it's good seeing you today. And Crystal had a request for a song, so I, I mean, I'm going to get out here without her trying to wrestle me to the ground and play that song. <laughs> so I am going to play that song, but I want to make sure everything was taken care of. So after the song is played, um, I'm going to. We're going to have the offering, and then we'll be able to go home. Thank yeah. you for the word. Yeah. Yeah. And I know you said you have a lot of songs that you have written. And so I, one of these days, the songs I wrote, I went to pray, seeing to sing them. And we're going to record them. That, but Brandy goes, you got to leave a legacy. I guess you think I'm going to cash out soon. <laughs> leave your legacy. All the songs you've written down, make sure that they're recorded. Amen. So we have something else to remind So I just thank God Amen. for that. So Chuck, you're getting a video ready? The rise, you got it ready, buddy? <laughs> Okay, that's not the one I wanted, uh, but I guess that'll do. All right, my bad. That's all right. You didn't write down exactly how to read on the paper, did you? Uh, yeah, this was just an extra. It's the same one. <laughs> Out your word every day. To love your word, to continue to have your word in high regard in our life, because God, without your word, we could not live. Because we live off the word of God every day to desire your word more than our necessary food. We thank you thank that you, you bless us as we walk with you. Bless us in our giving as we give to the kingdom of God. That you will bless our offering, our tithe. Bless us in our giving. That God will build the kingdom of God and it will build the house of God. So we thank you right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Please rise. Face the wall. Starting from the rear. Thank you, sir. I'm doing fine. How are you? You don't get anybody. I ain't miss anybody.
Ele é de Pé de Lourdes.